finally, 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 our dream has come true. Our wish has been granted. It is now possible for us to have live interactive lessons with qualified and professional teachers safely, comfortably, and peacefully at home, anywhere here in Ghana or abroad, any level of education at which you are primary, THS, or SHS. All your groups and programs are covered. All you need is a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or desktop computer with a webcam and a reliable internet connectivity. You may call it data, then you are good to go. Now, inform your parents or guardians to text your name, class, and age to the following numbers to get you registered. 024-6137-604 or 059-22-93567 or 059-387-0899. E-learning, extended lifelong learning, home-based TV, total enjoyment. My name is Mr. Emmanuel Tepo. I am your science facilitator for this program. Before then, let's have a recall. In GHS 1, under diversity of uh, matter, uh, you were taught about living and non-living things. And you were also taught about characteristics of living and non-living things. But over here, we just want to have a, a look at the, some of the characteristics of living things. Um, some of them you were taught are living things feed, which is nutrition, living things move, which is locomotion, living things respire, which is uh, respiration, uh, living things are sensitive to their environment, uh, which is sensitivity, and uh, last but not the least, living things bring forth young ones of their own kind, which is reproduction. This actually leads us to the topic for today. Today's lesson, we are going to learn about reproduction in humans. By the end of the topic reproduction, learners will be able to explain the term reproduction, two, explain the functions of the parts of the reproductive system, three, explain the term teenage pregnancy, four, state the causes of teenage pregnancy, and the last one, explain the effects of teenage pregnancy. But for our focus today, we are just going to do with the first objective. That is, by the end of the lesson, learners should be able to explain the term reproduction. What is reproduction? Reproduction is the process by which living organisms give rise or birth to young ones of their own kind or type. Now, someone may ask, why is it important for living organisms to reproduce? It is important for living organisms to reproduce because reproduction ensures continuity of species. What do I mean by that? For instance, at home you have different pets at home. So for this case, let's consider the pet cat or dog. Now, the type of dog you have in the house, let's say that is the only kind of dog we have in the entire world. Should this dog die today, what would happen is that there will not be any kind or type of that dog in the world again. This is why reproduction is important. So if the dog gives birth to a young dog, a puppy, and the puppy will be available to continue the life of that particular dog. And the puppy will serve as a kind of the, the parent dog that passed away. Let's look at plants. We have different types of plants in our home. For this matter, let's look at mango plant. If you have a special type of mango plant in your house, and let's say that is the only type of mango plant there is in this whole world. Should that mango plant be cut down? What it implies is that there will not be any kind or type of that mango plant in the world. That is why reproduction is important. There are two types of reproduction. And these are 
sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So I, I would like you to repeat the types of reproduction with me. One, sexual reproduction. Two, asexual reproduction. And I want you to pay attention to the spellings of the terms. Sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is with just an S, one S. It's not made up of two S's, just one S, asexual reproduction. Thank you. But I would like us to look at asexual reproduction first, then we move on to sexual reproduction. So let's continue. Asexual reproduction. This is the type of reproduction that involves the use of body parts to reproduce young ones of their own kind. So organisms that undergo asexual reproduction use their own body parts to reproduce young ones of their own kind. In asexual reproduction, only one parent is involved. Also, in asexual reproduction, no gamut is formed or used in asexual reproduction. For instance, the male gamut or the female gamut are not used in asexual reproduction. Now, let's look at examples of organisms that undergo asexual reproduction. Amoeba, we have sponges, ferns, bacteria, and onion. These are just few organisms that undergo asexual type of reproduction. There are many more organisms that undergo asexual types of reproduction. And mostly, plants and lower animals undergo asexual type of reproduction. Let's continue. We are looking at an example of asexual reproduction occurring in the organism amoeba. As you can see, the parent amoeba cell undergoes changes in order to divide into two different amoeba cells. So from the first stage to the fifth stage, you see the division almost about occurring. Now at the last stage, which is stage six, the parent amoeba cell has actually undergone asexual reproduction and has divided into two, forming two different amoeba cells from the same parent amoeba cell. Let's look at another example of asexual reproduction. This time we are looking at the yeast cell. Asexual reproduction in the yeast cell. Just like in the amoeba cell, you can see from stages one, two, three, and then the last stage, stage four, whereby the yeast cell has undergone asexual reproduction to produce multiple yeast cells. I hope by now you are clear with asexual reproduction. Looking at the various pictures that have been shown so far. And asexual reproduction is not just a word you are hearing, but you have now seen how it occurs. And you have also now seen some of the organisms that undergo asexual type of reproduction. With this said, we can now confidently move to the next type of reproduction, which is the sexual type of reproduction. What is sexual reproduction? This is a type of reproduction that involves a male and a female mating to produce young ones of their own kind or type. Let's look at sexual reproduction again. In sexual reproduction, two parents are involved. One must be a male and the other a female. Two parents are involved. 
Also, in sexual reproduction, gametes take part in sexual reproduction. So, in sexual reproduction, the female gamete fuses with the male gamete to form the young one. That is what sexual reproduction is about. Now, let's look at examples of organisms that undergo sexual reproduction. We have organisms like humans, dogs, goats, sheep, and cow. This is just to name a few. All these examples of living organisms I've mentioned so far undergo sexual type of reproduction. This is an example of sexual reproduction. These are the male gametes, also called sperm. And this is an example of the female garment called egg or ovum. This picture is under high magnification of a light microscope. This is another example of sexual reproduction in animals. Here, you can see the male and then the female involved. The male, which is the cock, on top of the female, which is the hen. The male, which is the bull, on top of the female, which is the cow. This is how sexual reproduction occurs. Over here, we would like to compare the two types of reproduction. We have the asexual and then the sexual type of reproduction. In the asexual, as you saw earlier, it involves one parent. It has no gametes, no male or female gametes are involved. The offsprings or children that are produced are genetically the same as the parents. They resemble their parents. That's what it means. So in the case of amoeba, as you saw, the new amoeba cell that was produced just looks the same as the parent amoeba cell. And in the case of the yeast cell, the multiple yeast cells that were produced looked just the same as the parent yeast cell. And let's look at sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, Two parents are involved, where one is a male and the other is a female. Sexual reproduction also involves gametes, the male gametes and then the female gametes. Three, sexual reproduction involves fertilization, where the male gametes will fuse with the female gametes to form a zygote. And four, in sexual reproduction, since two different parents are involved, a male and a female, offsprings or children that are produced from sexual reproduction are genetically different from each other. Their makeup is different from each other. Try your hands on these questions. One, define the term reproduction. Two, how many types of reproduction do we have? Three, briefly explain the following terms. A, sexual reproduction. B, asexual reproduction. You have four minutes for these questions stay tuned finally
finally, finally, our dream has come true. Our wish has been granted. It is now possible for us to have live interactive lessons with qualified and professional teachers safely, comfortably, and peacefully at home. Anywhere here in Ghana or abroad, any level of education at which you are primary, THS, or SHS, all your groups and programs are covered. All you need is a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or desktop computer with a webcam and a reliable internet connectivity. You may call it data, then you are good to go. Now, inform your parents or guardians to text your name, class, and age to the following numbers to get you registered 024 617 or 059 or 059 387 8899. E learning, extended lifelong learning, home based TV, total enjoyment. Let's look at the questions. The first question was define the term reproduction. Let's try to answer the question. It is a process by which living organisms give rise or birth to young ones of their own kind or type. I know you got this right. Let's look at the next question. How many types of reproduction do we have? Let's look at the answer to the question. Two. I hope you got that right. Three. Briefly explain the following terms. And the uh, word here is briefly. A. Sexual reproduction. Let's start on that today. This involves the mating or union of a male and a female, produce young ones of their own. Kind. Here, two parents are involved, a male and a female. If this is an answer you gave, it means you are 100% correct. Let's look at question 3B asexual reproduction. Let's look at the answer to that. This involves the use of body parts of an organism to produce young ones of their own kind. Here, only one parent is involved. I know you got that right. So you can mark your work and then score. If you got all right, clap for yourself for getting everything correct. Now let's go on to the next stage. After trying these questions, I want you to have this homework and then try your hands on it. Homework one, question one. State three differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. Question two. Give four examples of organisms that undergo A, sexual reproduction. B, asexual reproduction. When you are done with the homework, kindly send your answers to the number displayed on the screen to all our social media handles. I want to promise you, your answers would be looked at and marked till we meet again on the next episode. It has been a delight being with you. Stay focused and keep steady. Thank you. Bye. Finally, 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 our dream has come true. Our wish has been granted. It is now possible for us to have live interactive lessons with qualified and professional teachers safely, comfortably, and peacefully at home. Anywhere here in Ghana or abroad, any level of education at which you are primary, THS, or SHS, all your groups and programs are covered. All you need is a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or desktop computer with a webcam and a reliable internet connectivity. You may call it data, then you are good to go. Now, inform your parents or guardians to text your name, class, and age to the following numbers to get you registered. 024 637 Or 059 or 059 E-learning, extended lifelong learning, home-based TV, total enjoyment.